also Sprick Zarathustra, Op. 30 is a tone poem by Richard Strauss, composed in 1896 and inspired by Friedrich Nietzsche's philosophical novel of the same name. The composer conducted its first performance on November 27, 1896 in Frankfurt. A typical performance lasts half an hour. The work has been part of the classical repertoire since its first performance in 1896. The initial fanfare a Euro titled Sunrise in the composer's program notes a Euro became particularly well known after its use in Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film 2001, A Space Odyssey. Instrumentation, the orchestra consists of the following, piccolo, three flutes, three oboes, English horn, clarinet in E-flat, two clarinets in B-flat bass clarinet in B-flat, three bassoons, contrabassoon, six horns in F and E, four trumpets in C and E, three trombones, two tubers, timpani, bass drum, cymbals, triangle, glockenspiel, bell on low E, organ, and strings, two harps, violins I, two, violas, cellos, double basses. Structure the piece is divided into nine sections played with only three definite pauses. Strauss named the sections after selected chapters of the book, Ein Liertung, Odesson in Ofgang, von den Interitilren, von der Grohe und Schien sucht, von den Fruten und Lier den Schäfen, das Grablid, von der Wissenschaft, der Genesend, das Tanzlid, Nach Twandlilid. The piece starts with a sustained double low C on the double basses, contrabassoon and organ. This transforms into the brass fanfare of the introduction and introduces the dawn motif that is common throughout the work. The motif includes three notes, in intervals of a fifth and octave, as ka euro ga euro c. On its first appearance, the motif is a part of the first five notes of the natural overtone series, octave, octave and fifth, two octaves, two octaves and major third. The major third is immediately changed to a minor third, which is the first note played in the work that is not part of the overtone series. Of those in back waters begins with cellos, double basses and organ pedal before changing into a lyrical passage for the entire section. The next two sections, of the great yearning, and of joys and passions, both introduce motifs that are more chromatic in nature. Of science features an unusual fugue beginning in the double basses and cellos which consists of all twelve notes of the chromatic scale. It is one of the very few sections in the orchestral literature where the basses must play a contrabi. The convalescent acts is a reprise of the original motif, and ends with the entire orchestra climaxing on a massive chord. The dance song features a very prominent violin solo throughout the section. The end of the song of the night wanderer leaves the piece half resolved, with high flutes, piccolos and violins playing a B major chord, while the lower strings plug a C. One of the major compositional themes of the piece is the contrast between the keys of B major, representing humanity, and C major, representing the universe. Because B and C are adjacent notes, these keys are tonally dissimilar, B major uses five sharps, while C major has none. World Riddle Theme There are two opinions about the World Riddle Theme. Some sources denote the fifth octave intervals as the world riddle motif. However, other sources refer to the two conflicting keys in the final section as representing the world riddle, with the unresolved harmonic progression being an unfinished or unsolved riddle. The melody does not conclude with a well defined tonic note as being either C or B, hence, it is unfinished. The ending of the composition has been described, but the riddle is not solved. The tone poem ends enigmatically in two keys, the nature motif plucked softly, by the basses in its original key of car euro, and above the woodwinds, in the key of B major. The unsolvable end of the universe, for Strauss was not pacified by Nietzsche's solution. Neither C major nor B major is established as the tonic at the end of the composition. Recordings, in 1944. Strauss conducted the Vienna Philharmonic in an experimental high-fidelity recording of the piece, made on a German magnetophon tape recorder. This was later released on LP by Vanguard Records and on CD by various labels. Strauss's friend and colleague, Fritz Rainer, made the first stereophonic recording of the music with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra in March 1954 for RCA Victor. In 2012, 
This album was added to the Library of Congress's National Recording Registry list of culturally, historically, or aesthetically important American sound recordings. The recording of the opening fanfare used for the film 2001, A Space Odyssey was performed by Vienna Philharmonic and conducted by Herbert von Karajan. Elvis Presley used the opening fanfare as the opening piece in his concerts between 1971 and his death in 1977, and as the introduction to several of his live albums, including Elvis, as recorded at Madison Square Garden, Aloha from Hawaii Viaduct Satellite, and Elvis in Concert. Umir Diodato's funk-influenced arrangement of the opening fanfare Sunrise theme reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 US Popular Music Sales Charts in 1973, and number seven on the UK Singles Chart. His version was titled also Sprick Zarathustra, and won the 1974 Grammy Award for Best Pop Instrumental Performance. Notes External links, also Sprick Zarathustra Scores at the International Music Score Library Project, also Sprick Zarathustra on Internet Archive, Opening Movement, performed by WDR Symphony Orchestra Cologne, conducted by Samian Bayachkov, also Sprick Zarathustra on Internet Archive, performed by University of Chicago Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Barbara Schubert, also Sprick Zarathustra score on Mesopin, also Sprick Zarathustra. Decoding Strauss Tone Poem by Marin Alsop on NPR